In the 80s, we started manufacturing a Rory load pump at that point and today. And we introduced it to the municipal market in 1987. So it's the largest Rory load pump globally made. They all need oil changes once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> we are global as a company. The base is in Germany. We have around 370 people globally in uh, our company, 270 in Germany, 100 internationally, 50 of them here in the States, basically. We can, the municipal market is our core market. We are very well known in the market. We are in a lot of specifications of the engineering offices. So it's a very constant flow of, of work for us there, basically. We have a little bit of a burger specialty pump. It's a submersible really low pump. Is there a lot of extra machining that has to go on to get those? You need the clearances right. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of customers are you guys serving the most or kind of the pain points you're solving? Oh. Right, I'm here with Bernard with Burger. Yes. Give me a brief overview. What do you guys do? So Burger is a Germany-based company. We started in 1975. Yeah, in a rural area of Germany, northwestern Germany, two hours from Amsterdam. Yeah, Mr. Burger, so family-owned company, started having already four girls. He was mid 20s and started from scratch. We were not a manufacturer of products. We were a contractor, install, an installer in the farm community for a lot of manure-based systems. Yeah, tanks, mixing, pumping, things like that. In the 80s, we started manufacturing a Rory load pump, our core product at that point and today. And we introduced it to the municipal market in 1987 at the IFAT show in Munich, so biggest wastewater show in the world, basically. And from there it developed. Yeah, we made more and more models, more and more materials. So. We came from municipal to industrial markets and things like that, like chemical industry, pulp and paper. And then in the mid 90s, we started expanding internationally. We opened up subsidiaries in, in Singapore, in France, and then in 99, we opened up the facility here in the United States. In Minnesota, why Minnesota? My wife is from Minnesota. So that's how I ended up in Minnesota. And uh, I joined the company in 95 as an outside salesperson in Berlin. So it was a great time there. Uh, there was a lot of investment after the wall came down in the water wastewater industry over there. And then in 99, uh, we partnered up with the Burger family and myself and started the company here. And today we are a company with around 50 people. Yeah, We have around 45,000 square foot of warehouse and manufacturing space in Minnesota, right in Shanessen, a mile away from Prince's recording studio. I drive by there basically every day. And that's how we got here. <laughs> All right. Simply said, so you serve a w wide range of, of applications that your pumps. Yes. All the way from municipal to industrial. Which one is this one specifically used for? Is this in all applications or? So we have over 20 models what we are building in house in six series. So this is called the XL series. So XL, quite large. So it's the largest Rory Low pump globally made. Yeah. So. You see, basically, this we are calling a timing gear. Here's the pump head with all the flanges on there. So we have some models that are even longer, double the length of this one. So, so we can cover up to 7,000 gallons per minute, which is a very large unit. Yeah. And Mike, I know about MBRs and things like that has helped us a lot in the industry with the membrane bioreactors because we can cover large flows up to the largest strains that are being manufactured by the different manufacturers. But, so what's kind of unique about this pump versus other kind of large models? So there's two main pump groups in the world. It's a positive displacement pump and a centrifugal pump. Centrifugal pumps are, are used a lot more than uh, positive displacement pumps. Yeah, so a centrifugal pump is dynamic. You build pressure by speed with an impeller, where on a positive displacement pump, you grab a certain part of fluid and bring it from a suction to a discharge side. So it's basically a certain displacement. That's why it's called positive displacement. So, and then there is rotary positive displacement pumps, like what we make. And then there is reciprocal pumps, like diaphragm pumps and, and things like that, also a, a very big market, yeah? So, and in that field, we make a low pump. Works almost like a roots blower. Many people know what a roots blower is. So it has the same operating principle. The pump is submersible, it's symmetrical. So when you look at the front of the pump, it's basically, it has no preferred rotation direction. 
I can make this the suction side or I can make this the suction side. So let's say when we are in an oil terminal, let's say you're loading and unloading a tank or a, a, a tank, a truck or whatever, you can do it very well with this pump because you can load it and unload it just by turn, uh, turning the direction of the motor around. Ah. So here's our smallest model and here's one of our biggest models. You just put them just to understand the scale. So are they all kind of the same application? Do they follow that kind of symmetrical shape? Yeah. And yeah, so the principle and even the maintenance is all the same, basically, how they are designed. So if you know how to maintain this pump, you have it down also how to maintain this pump, basically. Oh, so you can, you yeah. got your people who do maintenance on your pumps, if they know how to do one, they know how to do the whole series. Most of them, yes. The principle is for the key elements of the maintenance is the same. They all need oil changes once in a while. <laughs> what kind of customers are you guys serving the most or kind of the pain points you're solving? So when I look at markets, so our roots are agriculture and we are still very active in that market in Germany, more in, in our local area. But here in the States, we have seen a very big market development with renewable natural gas. Yeah, with a low carbon fuel standard in, in California, where a lot of manure digesters have been worked on. And we have had a lot of success in that market. So that's a growing market for us. Then the municipal market is our core market. We are very well known in the market. We are in a lot of specifications of the engineering offices. So it's a very constant flow of, of work for us there, basically. Yeah, we have uh, full rep coverage through representations. So um, that's why we like to, to come here and, and, and bring new products or like the trailer, what we brought. So just to uh, see the reps, and basically see what other markets we can work with them or what kind of projects they are working and so on. Yeah, then the industrial market is, uh, we have some industrial customers here actually as well. So industrial wastewater and things like that. But there's, it's a deep market, pulp and paper, ethanol, wine industry. For example, exactly this pump model is used in the largest winery in the world in Livingston, California, oh. at Gallo. So they have the largest destemmers in the world. A truck shows up with the, wine, with the grapes dumps it into the distemmer, large augers, bring it to the pump, and we pump it into tanks and vessels or in a press at around 400 tons an hour. Four tons of wine grapes go in there, basically. That's always and also how our trade, we do a lot of trade shows, how our trade show season starts. The first trade show is always a wine show in, in Sacramento. Yeah, and oh, that's a different show than the wastewater show, but you have to be versatile. You go to all these different things. Basically. Because it's a wide application pump. Yes, 100%. So here we have a little bit of a burger specialty pump. It's a submersible really low pump. You see the pump head looks like the one over there, but it's vertically set basically. And then everything is sealed off. So here the coupling is under here. Here's the, here's the gear reducer and here's a submersible motor. Yeah. So let's say if you have not a lot of room or freezing issues, something like that, you can put the pump right into the fluid. Yeah. It's a specialty for, for burger. The centrifugal pumps do it all the time. Yeah, but we do it as a positive displacement pump. So let's say if you have like an oil water emulsion and you don't want to emulsify as much and the centrifugal pump just brings too much emulsification in there. This is, for example, an application where you can use it. Yeah, okay. so we do a lot of, of custom engineering. We have a very strong engineering department and a, a, a strong metal works department. So we can adjust to a lot of existing structures or buildings with our pumps, including submersible pumps. So for this pump, does the water actually come up over how high does it? Yeah, so let's say, let's say you're, the, the, the surface is over there. The pump is on the bottom. Yep. Here's the suction side. Then we have a connection over here. Yeah, so on, on the guide rail. And this is a discharge pipe and you pump wherever you need to pump, basically, at the end of the day. If you have to maintain it, there's normally a winch on here. Yeah, and you can just pull it up on the guide rail. And this disconnects then where the connection to a discharge pipe is. Little specialty thing. So then I want to show you one other thing here. So this is not a this is not a pump. This is a grinder. Looks like a pump, but when you look inside, there's not a rotor in there. We have a twin shaft grinder here. So this is a unit for downstream protection, but this is specific for pump stations. So with all the wet wipes and all, all the stuff that comes in with the sewage and also of the storm water, yeah then we often put this in front of a, of a pump station. You have submersible pumps, then we are dual station and pump into a collection system over to the wastewater treatment plant. 
we put this unit in, in, in front of the inside of the wet well, yeah, so that the, uh, that the material that comes in is being crushed down basically so the pump doesn't plug up. That's the application for this basically. The, is this like a kind of a, a different way of grinding it up than just like the typical impeller? That yes, so it's basically an additional grinding step. You could still use a chopper pump after it, yeah, but it, let's say if a piece of wood comes in and so we crush that down and things like that, so that the centrifugal pump pumping into the collection system does not uh, block or plug up basically. We have used mobile trailers for training and for sales presentations for 20 years. Yeah, our trailers got old, so we decided to build a new one and actually bring it to Weftec. So we thought this was the, the right venue to introduce a new trailer to our customer base. Yeah, so we have, we can use it for municipal clients, industrial clients. Yeah, so we have pumping units over here, over here. Yeah, Blue Line Legends are these called. This is a Blue Line Nova. You see my little sticker here. We came out with this not too long ago. Um, we revamped a lot of things. We used uh, uh, simulation software to get the pump as efficient as possible, basically. Yeah. So it's a new generation in the mid-side range between, let's say, 20 gallons per minute to 300 gallons per minute. So it's also geared a lot to the industrial market. We have a lot of sealing system and things like that. Yeah. There's another pump on the other end. Yeah, not really used as much for the municipal market, but we bring it here. Like I said, we have industrial customers or distributors coming. It's more a high pressure pump, but goes up to around 250 to 260 PSI. No rubber in there, it's just metal. So we use it for complex applications with a lot of sealing solution and things like that. Sealing solutions and yeah. stuff. So you said there's no rubber in there? There's no rubber rotor in there. Our standard is for abrasive applications to have a rubber rotor. As you can see over here in the pump, there's still one in. I don't know where the other one are. They have it down there. So basically, this is normally our standard material. So Buna and EPDM or Viton are different elastomers for different applications, what we use. But we can also make an all-metal rotor in all of the pumps. But the high-pressure pump is just in metal. Because we often have high temperatures there as well, where the elastomers just don't hold up anymore. And the rubber really can't handle that. Sometimes, that kind of yeah, when we get into, let's say, 250, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, it, I need to have an all metal pump. But there's also applications we play in with higher pressures uh, and higher temperatures in the, in the industrial market. Is there a lot of extra machining that has to go on to get those? You need the clearances right. Yeah, so it is a lot of extra machining. It's done on a five axis machine all manufactured in Germany, so we need to find the right, because metal expands, if you have a high temperature, you have to undercut the rotors a little bit in order you have no touch. And then also, how is the temperature gradient? Is it going up quick? Does it always stay at the same as the temperature changes? So a lot of things go in there, and our engineering department has to figure that out when we have an application like that. <laughs> yeah. but, but like you said, you have like a pretty big department. Yeah, I hope they're smart enough for it, that they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe uh, to, to finish it off here, we have our grinding equipment so you saw the pump station grinder over here so we have a model here as well so that so we can show that to our customer base as well or do some training on the machine so this is a twin shaft grinder what we manufacture it's called the multi crusher and then we have two other grinders here if you walk out basically so these are both single shaft grinders so this one has a we call it a rock catcher included we use this on a lot of ragging materials yeah, let's say digest the recirculations where maybe some fibers re-accumulate, we break that back up and stuff like that, basically. And then we have the multi-shopper on the other side. So this is called a rotor rake, and this is called a multi-shopper. It's more like a homo homogenizer, what we use a lot, let's say, in front of dewatering equipment, belt presses, centrifuges, screw presses where we have a pump and a multi-shopper together. So that's basically what we do with the trailer. Yeah, the trailer is a huge, it's pretty neat. I, I don't think I've seen any walking around the show at all. Oh no, that's, we just got it done and we said, what do we do for Weftec? And said, we bring the trailer. We bring yeah, we are global as a company. The base is in Germany. We have around 370 people globally in uh, our company, 270 in Germany, 100 internationally, 50 of them here in the States basically. We cover North and South America from our department over here. So that's our territory, basically. And we are based in Chan, has Minnesota, in the, in the Twin Cities area. Yeah, go Vikings. Yep. We'll see how it goes. <laughs>
and and we are on a lot of trade shows so give us a call contact us we have sales people across the country so i think we have a good setup to to serve our customer base all right bernard thank you very much for hey, this was this was fun